Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you for tuning in for today's YouTube live video. I'm Alexandra, the brand product specialist for MD Pen. And today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Fitzpatrick scale, why it's important to have a conversation with your client or patient. Um, you should be assessing their Fitzpatrick number, but you should also be getting their input on what they think their Fitzpatrick might be. This scale was developed in 1975, and it's definitely uh, not perfect. It does leave uh, room for error, and it does kind of put people, you know, in a box. It's only six numbers, and the scale of, uh, you know, different ethnicities, races, different colors we're presented with when we go to treat cosmetically um, is definitely infinite. So there's room for error and you can't assess someone just by looking at the color of their skin and trying to pick a, a number that goes with them. So that's why there is definitely a conversation uh, to be had. This scale is basically used to assess um, how the skin responds to burning and sun exposure. And the information was put there so that we could kind of assess what the overall risk might be uh, for sun damage and skin cancer between these Fitzpatrick numbers of one to six. But in our aesthetic realm, we also use it to assess when doing chemical peels or laser treatments, whether that be a photo facial or laser hair removal or certain peels um, that can be not used on certain Fitzpatrick types. So this video could be much longer and it's definitely something I wanna to talk to in more detail. Definitely tune in for next Monday's video as well up front. I will have a guest. I'll talk about that more towards the end of this video. Um, but for now, I'm gonna to try to you know, make this one brief. So let's just review the types one through six. So with type one, it is always going to burn. This is a skin type that never tans. Um, it is the palest. Um, albino skin type is very rare, but that's definitely a type one. But just remember that this skin type always burns. Next, we have type two, which is going to usually burn. It might minimally tan. And this is typically... Um, light colored skin, um, fair colored skin can be slightly darker than fair skin. And honestly, most Caucasians in general are going to fall into the type two category, but not as a rule. Um, this is often going to be depending where you live, but it will be the most common type um, that you will probably be grading when you're assessing Fitzpatrick. Now with type three, this skin type um, will sometimes burn. It's usually a mild burn. When they do tan, it's going to be a nice uniform tan. And this skin type can be anything from beige, uh, golden, honey, olive, um, these types of skin tones. And next we have skin type four. This type burns very minimally and it's always gonna tan well. It's going to tan to a moderate brown, always a complete ferro um, tan, again, minimally burning. With type five on the Fitzpatrick scale, this is going to very rarely burn and it's going to tan very easily. Tans easily, dark brown, skin type five. Skin type six never burns. This is the only Fitzpatrick number that never burns. And with this, you have more the deeply pigmented um, dark browns to darkest brown on the Fitzpatrick scale. So there's nothing higher than six. Again, never burning. Um, so just to reiterate, and again, this can be dark, ebony, black, dark brown skin that never burns. So I found this really cool article uh, when I was just doing a little bit of work for this video, um, and it's called Racial Limitations on the Fitzpatrick Scale. Um, if you want to look into it, um, it did assess um, the U.S. Census Bureau has estimated that over half the U.S. Um, um, will basically be a higher number on the Fitzpatrick Scale after 2015. Now, this was assessed in 2015. So of course, now we're in 2022. I'd be very curious um, to see what that number will be. So what I'm saying is if you're not already um, in your spa office, and you're not already familiar with treating other skin types, 
um, beyond, you know, what you're used to. If you don't currently have a large clientele of skin types four to six, now is the time to start getting familiar. And you should definitely do your research um, because we're going to have far less um, Eastern uh, European populations, uh, especially in this part, you know, in the United States, um, according to this U.S. Census Bureau as time goes on. Um, so again, this Fitzpatrick number should be both visual and self-reported. So you need to have something on your intake form where your client or patient is self-reporting based on reading and definitely have in there um, what each Fitzpatrick you know, number means so they can assess how they burn, how easily they burn, if they don't burn. And um, that way you can see it. Um, I've had an experience before where I was um, getting laser hair removal at a, a new office that um, they had treated me before, but never for laser hair. And that certain practitioner had never treated me. And during the treatment, um, I was like, uh, it just seemed very easy. <laughs> um, and after the uh, treatment, she said, I treated you as a skin type four or five to err on the side of caution. And I could tell. And at that point, I was kind of like, because eh, I'm maybe a skin type, I would say I'm a skin type three. Um, in some cases, I think I could even fall into a, a, a 2.5 or something. So when she said that, sure enough, you know, the treatment didn't take, I, I called in back and ended up going back in. Um, but, you know, she was trying to be cautious, but had she, you know, maybe asked me more, had I known she was going to um, adjust the laser based on treating me as a skin type four or five, I, I would have really asked her not to because that's not my my skin type. And she could have really cranked it up and the treatment wasn't effective as a result. Um, so yeah, it's a conversation um, you do want to have. Of course, there's understanding also race versus ethnicity, whereas with race, um, you are going to have this link to more physical uh, characteristics uh, that you see, such as skin color, texture of hair, things like this. Ethnicity is more based on cultural expression and then knowing um, the uh, country of origin for that person. So that's their ethnicity. So find out, you know, you can find out their country of origin and then you can also find out race. There's so many, again, there's so many limitations. You can have a very, um, you know, light skinned uh, skin type two, um, you know, Hispanic person uh, that might have green eyes and, you know, you don't want to make assumptions about how they burn or if they don't burn. So again, definitely have this conversation um, just to tell you guys up front next Monday, I will be doing a video here at 10 a.m. on uh, YouTube, but it will be streaming also to LinkedIn and Facebook. Very special guest, Terry Greer. She is a dermatology uh, nurse with a lot of experience in treating skin of color. And we're going to talk about um, why microneedling in particular can be an ideal choice, especially for these Fitzpatrick numbers um, and especially darker skin types that have sensitive skin. Then you're really, um, you know, having me to to be selective with how you treat them. And she's an expert. So I'm really excited to do this video with her. It'll almost be like a second part to this video, but parts of this video will come up. And I really want to get her opinion on uh, Fitzpatrick and be able to have her talk to you guys about that. So please do ask questions now in the comments. I'm going to try to answer all these for you guys. Um, do skin types need different types of SPF? Um, like percentage. So the number of SPF um, for everyday use should never really be below 30. Um, if you do plan to have direct sun exposure, you can, you know, do a higher number SPF, but the higher numbers don't add a ton of protection. Um, you still need to be reapplying every 80 minutes. If you are someone who is prone to hyperpigmentation or melasma, um, which in my opinion can really fall on um, I guess skin types two to five, um, you really probably want to have a zinc oxide or that higher SPF, um, but you've got to have a good physical sunscreen is what's important is what the sunscreen is. Um, darker skin types should experiment with samples of sunscreen. They don't want a powdery residue on their skin. That's one thing I really like about um, SPF. Uh, MD pens, broad pen, SPF 30. Um, there's no powdery residual residue left on, you know, any type of skin. And this really has a really nice lotion consistency, um, but not leaving any powdery residue on darker skin types, which can be really frustrating when you're trying to find 
um, a sunscreen. And yes, you can microneedle every Fitzpatrick skin type. Um, we have different protocols. We do trainings on how to treat different types if you do have questions, if you are an MD pen professional, but that's one great thing about training with us. Um, you can microneedle. There's certain cautions, precautions you'll want to use um, with treating some of the different Fitzpatrick numbers, but that's one great thing um, about microneedling is as far as um, Fitzpatrick number, no one is excluded. What type of skin is vitamin C ideal to treat? Um, so that's a good question. In my opinion, everyone should be on a, a vitamin C um, unless you're being, you know, under a dermatologist care for another condition or if you have severe acne or something like this. Um, with MD Pen, we did try to make our vitamin C, and I think we succeeded um, in a way that people with sensitive and rosacea skin can also use it. There's an ingredient in here called Nutrizen. Um, but finding the right vitamin C, that's kind of, I really would compare it to finding the right sunscreen. There's a right sunscreen for everyone and there's a right antioxidant product um, for everyone, but it's important to protect your skin um, against free radicals, pollution, uh, UV damage. And then it's also just great, you know, for lightening and brightening and all those great um, things that come with using a vitamin C uh, a product. What is skin Patrick type used for? Yeah. So, it's based to uh, um, determine how much you burn, uh, which is meant more in a medical, you know, clinical way uh, to assess how prone you are to skin cancer um, and overall risk of sun damage. However, every Fitzpatrick number um, can get skin cancer. Uh, one type, you know, might be more prone to squamous cell. Uh, one Fitzpatrick number might be more prone to atypical uh, nevi or, you know, turning in dysplastic melanoma. Um, so it really just depends, but it's to predict your overall risk, um, of burning, how your skin responds and to assess again, the risk of sun damage and skin cancer. But we do use it again, um, aesthetically. It can tell us a lot about how to uh, treat the skin from a cosmetic standpoint. So thank you guys for asking that. Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday. And if you haven't already um, heard about it, seen it, uh, perhaps in your email, we have these awesome Mother's Day uh, Sleeping Beauty kits, which contain our Revita Peptide Moisture Cream and our Retinol. These pair really awesome together. The Revita Peptide can be used twice a day as an AM, PM moisturizer and your Retinol being worn at night. Um, you can put the retinol in the evening with the Revita over it. These are great. They're dosed pumps, uh, two pumps for a full face. You can add more if you want to um, treat your neck. And it's also going to come with a really cute white MD pen cosmetic bag and a purple sleep mask with our MD pen logo on it. Um, very comfortable. It does block out the light. And it's just a really cute little bundle gift for mom. It's available uh, for professionals on our website and also for our retail customers. So you guys can definitely go shopping on there. It is discounted. Um, so basically the, the mask and the cosmetic bag you're, you're getting at no charge. And then the products themselves are also discounted. So it's a great little set. Awesome gift for mom. If you guys just want to go shopping in general, um, here is a 10% off code. Um, you can use on our website to go shopping fits 10. This is going to be good, good for the next uh, 48 hours. And, um, obviously you can't use it on the mother's day set cause it's already discounted, but if there's something you're looking to buy, you can definitely, um, go look for that there. So do please tune in next Monday. Again, it'll be at the same time, 10 AM Eastern. I'll have, um, Terry Greer here. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Again, thank you so much for all of your engagement. That video will also be on Facebook and LinkedIn if you prefer to use one of those platforms. Thanks, guys. Bye.